Pastor Melly. Uh, th thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can see the House is welcoming me because I'm getting used to uh, sitting in minority leadership position. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I had actually uh, consulted you uh, on the side yesterday on behalf of Honorable Tiende Amolo in relation to the same Article 115 of the Constitution. And over and above what the Honorable Member has suggested, unfortunately, because I thought this was coming back, was going to come on Tuesday, so I've not actually come with these written uh, uh, submissions. But what Honorable Tiende Amolo was requesting, over and above what the Honorable Member has said, was that according to him, within 14 days, automatically the bill becomes law. And therefore, in his considered legal view, uh, then what should have been done was to just do a one-liner um, uh, seeking to repeal a bill that had already passed. So I would want to uh, say on behalf of Honorable Tiende Amolo, uh, that he's also got the same concerns under Article 115 of the Constitution. Thank you. Honorable members, yes. Honorable Tenda Molo wrote to me, order, Honorable Mili, order, and Honorable Member for Keio South. If you read the Constitution very carefully and understand it, when the bill is sent to the president, he can pick out clauses he doesn't agree with and send to the house. That is what is contemplated in what you have quoted. Then the bill will come back with specifically identified clauses that the president does not an agree with and a proposal on what he wants or she wants, even the president is a lady. The House will then consider, if you marshal two-thirds majority, you can overturn the President's reservations and restore the clauses as you passed them ab initio. If you don't marshal, then the reservations become part of the bill. And the remaining parts of the bill which had no reservations, together with the reservations clauses that you either have agreed with or not agreed with, depending on the numbers you marshal, then there will be still a bill to take back to the president for assent. In this particular case, the president has expressed reservations on everything, including the title. So what has come here is a bill as you passed with a reservation on the short title, the long title, the memorandum, all the clauses. So if you fail to overturn what the president has reserved, then there is nothing to take back to the president for assent. And there is already precedent set by this house there's a member who brought a bill to amend the Contracts Act, another to amend, I think it was the Central Bank Act, or the Penal Code, and each had only one amendment. When they were taken to the president, expressed reservations to the clause amending the Penal Code. The House was unable to overturn, so what was left was only the title of the bill and nothing else. You can't carry a title of the bill to the president for assent. So it all died there. Number three to Honorable Mili. Honorable Tienda Molo has engaged me on some jurisprudence on this matter. And we have engaged one on one. I've reminded him of my seniority in the legal profession and my long usage of the law. And I told him, and I want to repeat, that what he sent to me as a draft bill to repeal the finance bill were just papers. Because you can't repeal what is not an act of parliament. Once the bill was sent to the president, 
if the president does not ascend to the bill within 14 days, it automatically becomes law. If he has reservations and sends it back to the House, then those 14 days do not apply. Then you come back to the House, deal with the reservations, and if you overturn his reservations, you take back the bill to him to ascend as you have passed. So tell Honorable Tenda Molo that what I told him about the law and what he wrote to me is repeated in this House, and that the academic exercise was just good for communication between the Speaker and him, but carried no material value whatsoever in considering this bill. Honorable members, I hope that rests the matter. Yes, Caroli? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I think we need some little clarity on the step that we will take as a House once we amend the bill by adopting the reservations of the President. Because what the Constitution says is when there's a referral, we have two options. One, we can amend by accepting all the reservations of the president. We have still amended the bill. Yeah. Or we can review the reservations of the president and amend. In other words, we introduce new clauses. When we introduce the new clauses, the Constitution requires us to marshal the two-thirds. But even if we adopt the amendments, as expressed by the president, all the reservations, which I hope we are all going to do, the Constitution requires us still to present a document from the House to the president for his assent to signify that all his reservations have been accepted and that bill has been formally terminated. And may I read? If parliament amends the bill fully accommodating the president's reservations, the appropriate speaker shall resubmit it to the president for assent. So we must send a document from the House to the president. That is what the Constitution Honorable says. Honorable Carole Omondi, I don't know if you followed my explanation. If this Honorable Carole Omondi, if if the president had sent to the House portions of the bill on clauses he does not agree with, then the bill, as you passed in portions he has not expressed any reservations, remain validly passed. Then you deal with what he has reservations on. If you marshal 233 and overturn his reservations, you send back the bill in original form as you passed it. Then he has to ascend. If you fail to raise two-thirds and you have clauses that were saved in the memorandum, then you take back the bill as you passed it with the reservations as they came as now part of the bill. So the bill is now amended with those reservations. In this particular case, the president has told you that he has reservations on the entire bill, including the title. So when you agree with the president in his memorandum, there is no bill there to take back for assent. The matter ends there. All that the speaker will do is convey a message to the president that the House agreed with you on this bill and there is nothing to bring to you to assent.